For the last two months, we have called Southern Utah home and have explored as much as possible, including all five national parks, state parks with incredible scenery, trying new activities like sand sledding and snow tubing, seeing cool history, hiking through epic slot canyons, and so much more. For our final Utah adventure, we're back in Moab, but this time we're going to share with you some cool things to do that are not national parks and are dog friendly, as well as some delicious places to eat. We have quite a few spots that we want to check out over the next few days and first up we are at Dead Horse Point State Park. This park is located super close to Canyonlands but unlike the National Park this park is dog friendly and to get the full experience of the park we're going to hike the Rim Loop Trail. The Rim Loop Trail is about five miles and it takes you all around the park stopping at different overlooks along the way and we parked at the Dead Horse Point overlook parking area and we're doing the trail counterclockwise so we're starting with the east rim so that way we end on the west rim closer to sunset. So the name Dead Horse sounds pretty morbid and one legend claims that cowboys used to round up the Mustangs that would roam on top of this mesa and they used to round them up onto this place called the Neck that was only 30 yards wide and then onto this point that had steep drop offs on all sides. And so they used to corral them in there with sticks and fencing to keep them there and they would pick and choose the ones they wanted to keep and for some reason one time they left the horses there without water, never came back for them and they died there with views of the Colorado River 2,000 feet below them. Super sad, super morbid. Sorry I had to lay that on you today. <laughs> something along the trail I had to google it but anyways these blue ponds back here are potash evaporation ponds and potash is a general term for potassium salts and this is used in things like batteries ceramics glass soaps all kinds of stuff and so they mine the potash from 3,000 feet below the surface there they pool it in these pools and then they dye it blue because apparently the dye helps it evaporate faster and so once it evaporates all the potash is down at the bottom and that's what they use for the products. Well, this is an awesome view. <laughs> Popped around the corner and yeah. bam! Boom, right in your face. Wow. Oh my gosh, Don't, look oh, right there. I was like blinded by the sun, I couldn't see those. <laughs> Looks like bat ears, like Batman in the shadow. I was gonna say a bunny rabbit, but that, that too. too. <laughs> Holy wow. wow. This is the best one so far. Oh, 100%.
We obviously love the national parks, but don't sleep on the state parks, especially here in Utah. We found all over the US that the state parks tend to have just as beautiful of views, but with way less people than the national parks do. informational board over there they said there's a ghost horse part of the legend and you can see the ghost horse right there That was a great sunset and we had a ton of fun on the trail. It's a pretty easy trail, good for all ages and most ability levels. When you're not at an overlook, you're kind of just walking on the path, walking on through the trees and things like that. But at the overlooks, you have incredible views and each one gives you a little bit of a different perspective of the canyon surrounding you. Couldn't have asked for a better way to kick off our final weekend here in Utah. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna continue our adventures here in Moab. We headed to a spot called Dobird this morning to grab these amazing looking donuts. They open at 7 a.m. and we had heard get there as soon as possible because they start to sell out of flavors as time goes on. So on the plus side, we had a ton of choices of flavors, but on the downside, we had a ton of choices of flavors and it was really hard to pick. So we finally came to a decision on these two gorgeous looking things. This one is a salted caramel cronut, which is a mix between a donut and a croissant. I can already see the layers there. I'll show you in a second. And this is an apple cinnamon fritter. And let me tell you, this thing is heavy. There is some fruit in there. You can already tell. It's just, it, it, this one actually looks like a pillow. I would <laughs> lay down and sleep on this. <laughs> this cronut has like a nice flaky kind of crust on the bottom of it. And then it's so gooey and sticky and sugary on top. Oh, that is so crunchy and sugary. Oh, it has so many layers in there. Oh, this like bottom layer is like wanting to like come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love the crunch and then the softness and the buttery flakiness in there. It's kind of light and airy. It is kind of light and airy, but- You don't feel as bad eating it maybe? Yeah, maybe we should go get them three more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and then, then the salted caramel on top and the glaze. Man, that is amazing. I'm very excited for this for days. I love apple fritters. They're probably my favorite donut or thing to get at a donut shop. All right, I didn't get fruit in that bite, but I can see there's gonna be some filling in there. Oh my goodness. But man, like I said, pillowy, pillowy, pilly. I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm gonna go back to sleep right here. Oh man, the cinnamon on top of there, the glaze, the apple taste, so fluffy so dang good you can see the apples oh, inside yeah. of it <laughs> oh my goodness it tastes like apple pie in a donut had a baby it is so soft and fluffy that's the bite right there you get the crunch from the apple a little bit of tartness more sweetness more cinnamon oh it just mixes so well so we do have one more thing we want to try at Dobird, but we have to wait a few hours first which is probably good because we need to make some room after devouring these donuts. So don't judge us, but we also got a massive fried chicken sandwich. So starting at 11 o'clock, they start selling fried chicken sandwiches. 
comes with a massive piece of fried chicken on there. This bun looks awesome. And then coleslaw and pickles. And it comes with a bunch of waffle fries. And in my opinion, waffle fries are the best cut of French fries. So there's a few different levels of spiciness. I got the hot, which is the one right below the hottest, which is, what is it? Like melt your cluck and face off. Your cluck, <laughs> melt your cluck and face off. And so Catherine ordered it and they said that most people come in for a glass of milk, like come back for one. It's like a nine out of 10 on the Nashville hot chicken scale. We'll see, but we did get a glass of milk just in case, I guess, but I'm hoping not to use it. I think this is a donut bun. <laughs> I think that's what I heard. Yeah, that's a donut. <laughs> I've never done that, but I've always wanted to. I'm kind of nervous on this spice level. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm done. It is getting pretty hot. I might have to touch that. <laughs> At first I was like, oh, I'll be okay, but it keeps going and going. Oh, but there's so much crunch on the chicken there. And that's a hefty piece of chicken. All the slaw kind of cools it off just a tad. And then the bun is definitely a donut. It's not glazed, it's not sweet, but it's donut dough and it takes it to the next level. This is amazing. I'm feeling the heat in my throat a little bit. Wow, that is so good. The bun is kind of crunchy on the bottom, but so soft on the inside and oh my gosh. It's starting to burn a little bit more. <laughs> I might need the milk. Adam says he's not gonna drink the milk, but I definitely have to. My mouth is on fire. <laughs> the waffle fries look like they have a seasoning on them. These might be the best waffle fries I've ever had in my life. They are so crunchy, it's soft on the inside. Can you, can you hear the crunch? <laughs> oh man, this is the most unhealthy day we've had in a while, but I'm not mad about it at all. I'm in pain. This is pretty uncomfortable, but it's gonna hurt my pride if I drink the milk. Only drink it for protein, not for comfort. I drink most of it. I have no pride. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we're hiking the Fisher Towers Trail, which is about 4.4 miles round trip and about 1,500 feet of elevation gain. There's gonna be one part that might be a little tricky for Kona, so we'll see if we go the whole way, but we're gonna try our best. Some of these rock towers actually have names and they are Kingfisher, Echo, Cottontail, and Titan. And they're considered classic climbing routes with the first noted ascent in 1964. And we don't really know how to describe it, but these towers just have such a different look than anything we've seen here in Utah so far. They just have this interesting texture to them. That's the best way I guess we can put it. Just the pattern of the rock. It's just very, very interesting. They're so tall. <laughs> wow, I can't believe people climb these. <laughs> It says at the trailhead on the sign that these are actually layers of mud. So it kind of makes sense at how smooth and kind of bumpy they look. Very interesting looking. We made it to the part that we weren't so sure about this ladder here. We can obviously make it pretty easily on our own, but we don't know about taking Kona down it because it's five or six rungs and it, she's it just, just not gonna like it. She's not gonna like it because I'd have to carry her the whole time. She'd be so scared. Yeah, so we're gonna try to maybe find a way around. We read that there is one. So we climbed up this hill a little bit above the ladder and we think there's a way that you can skirt across here and get back down to the trail down there. But I don't know, I don't think we're gonna do it. And we've seen dogs make it down and back up this ladder here, but with Kona, uh, she's just not gonna like it and it's just not gonna be a good experience for us. So I think we're gonna turn around here. And to be honest, ever since I had that chicken sandwich, I think it was the spiciest thing I've had in a long time. It was pretty spicy. I've just had like really bad heartburn all day. 
stomach's not feeling 100 percent so i think we were just looking for something to <laughs> turn us around <laughs> the views from just the parts of the hike we were able to do were amazing so even if you're only able to make it this far you're in for a treat and just for reference this is where we turned around so about halfway to the end of the hike That hike didn't totally work out, but we still have one more hike we want to do in the Moab area, and we're going to get up bright and early tomorrow and hike to the Corona Arch for sunrise. The Corona Arch is probably one of the most popular non-national park hikes here in Moab. It's about three miles round trip and we'll actually get to see three different arches along the way, as well as some interesting features and kind of challenging features, including our first one, which is crossing a railroad. is this line of cables here that I guess helps you walk across this slick rock here. I don't really see the need for it on this one but maybe if it's wet it might be more helpful but there's also another section that helps you up that's a bit more steep so we'll see that one in a second. So that was the trickier of the two cable spots because it's a lot steeper, but they have a lot of footholds, so it really wasn't that bad. Kona took it like a champ. Kona's our little mountain goat, we always say. She just ran on up. <laughs> the third and final obstacle to get to Corona Arch, this one, two, three, four, five rung ladder that takes you up this little wall here. Kona, you ready to go up the ladder? <laughs> With it, there's another way to get around if you kind of skirt up the wall along here that we'll probably do. Yeah, so unlike last night where we stopped the hike because of the ladder, this this ladder will not stop us. Looks easier to get around with a dog. Yeah. I'm going up it though. <laughs> We're just steps away from the Corona Arch, but right before you get to it, you come across this arch, which is called the Bowtie Arch. And from our time at Arches National Park, I'm pretty sure this is considered a pothole arch. And at the trailhead, they had some signage about the geology of the area, which I thought was super interesting. It says that the three arches along this trail are all located in the Navajo Formation that was deposited approximately 190 to 180 million years ago as a large windblown sand dunes. <sighs> We made it to the Corona Arch, and it's probably one of the biggest arches we've seen probably in Utah besides the Landscape Arch, which is super long, the longest one in the world apparently. But this one has an opening of 140 feet high and 105 feet wide. It's also probably one of the thickest. It's got like a thick column arch structure. <laughs> Huge, gigantic. We didn't know if our sunrise trip would work this time because Moab is honestly just a madhouse. It is crazy busy all day, every day. So we thought surely there'll be someone else here with us at the arch, but we have it all to ourselves 
Adam's even he taking just, a nap under the arch. You can just lay down, watch the sunrise, <laughs> cuddle a dog. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Couldn't get any better. And just for reference, it's a Sunday morning, so it's the weekend, and it's we're still 6:34. 6:34 a.m. No one else is here yet. back on the trail and we see what we think are deer. I don't think they are. They might be. Like, they have interesting horns. Yeah. They're staring at us. They're much more uh, people cognizant, I don't know. They're like moving towards us and staring at us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should keep moving. Surprisingly, Kona's not barking at them, which is the biggest shock of 2021. <laughs> So in between the parking lot and the Corona Arch is an offshoot trail to, that'll take you to this arch, the Pinto Arch. This one's really cool too. It's a little tougher to get to this one, more of a climb. That hike totally lived up to all of the hype and is such a good bang for your buck. It's not that long of a hike at all. You get to see three arches and there are all those fun and unique features like the railroad tracks, the wires and the ladder that just make it different and more, I guess, adventurous feeling than a regular trail. It was probably the best final hike we could ask for here in Utah. For our final stop in Moab, we came to a spot called Quesadilla Mobia, which is a quesadilla food truck. And fun fact, many, many years ago when we lived in Austin, I always kind of joked, but also was kind of serious that I wanted to open up a quesadilla food truck. So I'm excited to try my competitor. <laughs> so these giant quesadillas look delicious. So I got the Southern Bell, which is red chili beef, sweet potato, corn, and onions, and then of course, <laughs> it's just dripping with cheese. Oh my goodness, looks so good. And then every order comes with a salsa. One's hot, one's mild, I'm not sure which is which. And you can get regular sour cream or a chipotle sour cream. And I got the enchanted chicken on a gluten-free tortilla, which I'm so happy that they offer that. And it has this green chili chicken inside, some red bell peppers, corn, I believe, and onion, and then obviously some cheese as well. Look at that. Oh my God. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> so excited for this. This has so much flavor. The beef, it, it tastes like it's kind of stewed, so it's very tender and juicy. So many seasonings on there, just has a, loads of flavor. The corn gives it nice sweetness. Sweet potato gives it a little sweetness, but more hearty bite to it. The corn is great loads and loads of cheese and then this tortilla is really nice it's crispy on the outside it's just kind of fried cooked to perfection oh dang that is good it has so much melted cheese on the inside and then the chicken since it was kind of cooked in the sauce it's just so juicy in there so i bit into it and it was like whoa all at once but that is so flavorful the chicken kind of tastes like the enchiladas that we made in a couple of it, uh, last video, I think. So it brings back some good memories, but it has such great texture. Now mine's starting to make a huge mess, but 
Oh, that is so delicious. You would never know this tortilla didn't have gluten in it either. So that's a win. And that is a wrap on our two months here in Utah. We can't believe that our time here is already over. We've never stayed in one area for this long in the van and we love getting to explore one general area more in depth and kind of being able to have more of a routine instead of just driving around all the time. And of course, the scenery here was so crazy and every adventure was just mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a ton that we didn't get to see and do. So we will definitely be coming back to explore all of that. But for now, we are relocating to the state of Colorado for the next month and a half or so. And we are <laughs> so pumped and excited to share some mountain adventures with you soon. The name Dead Point sounds pretty morbid, huh? What? What did I say? Dead point? <laughs> so the name Dead Point sound Dead Point. <laughs> so the name Dead Point sounds pretty morbid. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? It's one of the few good things in this world named Corona. <laughs> it's Archtastic. <laughs>